And we'll go ahead and kick things off with Andy. Hey, what's up, Doug? How are you doing? Can you hear me all right? You got me? Now you're good. I had it muted. My bad. Fine, fine. Good, good. Uh, first off, how are you doing? Uh, I assume this is a little bit of an easier prep and trip than uh, the last one out to South Carolina. Yeah, that one was the gift that kept on giving. Uh, the charter was four or five hours late, and we were we were all just hanging out, bonding inside of a, a little hangar, waiting for that plane who took another flight in between our games. So that was kind of fitting for the trip. What do you see? Uh, what, what kind of jumps out to you about Alabama and what they bring? Obviously, they have a player uh, that used to play at Mississippi State last season, so I don't know if the players might know her pretty well. Yeah, they do, and 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 she is she's quite a player. You're really athletic, competitive. Uh, I think she's averaging two point six steals somewhere in that neighborhood. But I, her motor is really good, um, and so um, and and I mean they have a lot of good players. Obviously, their the quickness and and they're forcing nineteen turnovers a game. Uh, but to me that. Ming, Mingo, when she really starts, she really gets that thing going. She spearheads it. She just looks a little bit different than everybody else. Um, and, and I'm sure uh, she'll be pretty excited to play against Mississippi State. I don't know her at all, but, you know, I just have kind of admired how she played for them. You guys have been, you guys have been pretty good with, with, like, not turning the ball over since that Oklahoma game. Do you feel like that's, a, that's an area that you guys can kind of, I don't know, keep it kind of low against a team that does turn or force a lot of turnovers? Uh, that that would be the goal, uh, and again, we we knew that from the very beginning. With uh, you know, you kind of get tired of talking about the size, but you know, how do you neutralize size? How do you you know if you're going to get beat on the board some nights, where else can you pick up an extra possession? Um, so taking care of the ball would be one of them. Uh, getting better every day with your rebounding would be one of them. Um, but yeah, it'll it'll be a test for sure. Uh, with, you know, that's, that's what they do. That's, that's part of their DNA is, is to turn people over. So, um, you know, and, and we're fighting every day to improve our skills and take care of the ball and throw the right passes on time, on target, uh, all direct passes, try not to throw any lob passes. Colin, go ahead. Hey coach. Um, I guess first, uh, how does it feel to be at least uh, somewhat back on schedule? And would you say that preparation this week has gone uh, a bit more smooth than last week? Uh, yes. I'm trying to figure out if I should lie on that one or not. Uh, we haven't had great practices. Really sluggish yesterday, to be honest with you. Uh, wasn't really happy. And so some of it may have been a, a late, you know, getting back at 3 or 4 a.m., but, but not really, that, that, that's on us. Uh, we, we salvaged yesterday at the end, and, and sometimes that's, that's a big deal. You know, if you're gonna start low energy and, and not have maybe, maybe the right attitude to, to go, going after practice. Um, and if you can salvage it and, and turn the ship, you know, you get, sometimes you have to do that in games, but you know, in practice, that's really hard. Um, and we did it, and so that that was a little uh, a minor success yesterday, and then uh, and then today today with today was better. Uh, they had they had better juice, and again, they knowing that that game is is coming up. So, you know, a two day prep. Um, well, now that I think about it, the, our assistant coach got COVID. He he had the scout, so that that did create a little bit of a of a problem. Uh, we fixed it pretty quick because when we do scouts, we all do them together. Uh, one person is in charge, but it's, you know, if one person goes down, everybody's ready to step up. So, so we had to work a, a little bit harder at the rest of the staff in putting that together for today's practice. John, go ahead. Hey, Doug, um, that kind of leads into my next question here. Uh, what, um, are there any other like COVID issues within the team uh, depth wise going into this, uh, this Alabama game? Uh, not that I know of. I, I think we're good. I think we're good, but uh, you know, it's just, I mean, I guess we all should be used to this a little bit more. Uh, 
it, there's no rhyme or reason to this. You know, the two assistants get knocked out today. Uh, they feel fine. Um, you know, maybe one of them just had a little cough and, and got tested. And sure enough, he had it. There was a contact trace with that. No players involved, but, you know, two coaches. And, and you can say what you want in terms of, you know, for the last game, we had a couple coaches out for that, two different ones, a director of basketball operations. And all those, all those positions matter. Uh, to every program, not just ours. Uh, you think, well, do, we only need our leading st- score. We only need this. We only need that. But there's a lot of pieces that make a program work. And uh, and some of these people are so good, and they've been around here uh, for a while, is that we take them for granted because um, we don't have to know the ins and outs of things because they always take care of you. And then they're gone for a trip, and it, it makes life interesting. And maybe it was a Maybe it was a good thing for those people to, for us to know how, how much we value them and how much we appreciate what they do. And maybe we were taking them for granted. I don't anymore. Um, so it's, uh, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm glad that we all do scouts together. I'm glad that everybody is, is on board. So if, if one person does go down, you know, it's like we talked about with players too. It's, you know, it probably is beneficial for you to have as many versatile players as possible, as opposed to like, this is a certain position that they have to play uh, because versatility is a key. And uh, a quick follow-up to that. Um, who are the, uh, the coaches that, that have uh, COVID if you're able to share? I don't know. Am I? I'm not able to share that, but you'll, okay. be, no you'll, be, you'll be able to see there'll be a big hole with uh, Pre- Appreciate that. Thanks. A very large hole missing on the bench. Robbie, go ahead. Hey, Coach. uh, I asked you something similar whenever we had that first press conference, (laughs) whenever you took over, just how you sell Mississippi State as a a sitting interim head coach to recruits, because that's obviously something that's um, always ongoing in recruiting. You're always having to build for the future. And now that you've kind of been in that spot for the last couple of months or so, how have you sold Mississippi State during this time that's kind of still an area of flux? Yeah. I mean, I said it, and I, and I believed it when I said it, but you don't have any proof. Um, you know, I, I think what I, what I referred to is that we're at Mississippi State, and women's basketball is a big deal here. And in Mississippi State – in some ways really does sell itself. Uh, the fans, the history, the, uh, the excitement uh, surrounding Mississippi State. And then, uh, so that's a huge piece. Uh, and, you know, recruiting, you know, throughout this year, it's, it's been accurate. Uh, we've been able to talk to some really good players and, you know, got a commitment from, from one or two and, and uh, they're excited about coming to Mississippi State. Now they do like how we play and all that stuff and they're excited about, about those things. But, uh, you know, to have Mississippi State behind you, like, you know, you're, it's, it's right here. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a great place to recruit too, I can tell you that. Kind of on the same lines, uh, for you personally, you were kind of thrown into this. You were expecting to come in, like you said earlier, and, and just help out any way that you could, and all of a sudden you're leading the program. I don't know how much you knew about Mississippi State or anything like that beforehand, but what's your impressions on on this place since you've been here <laughs> and your experience so far? Yeah, it, it's it's been great. First of all, I love Starkville, and uh, – I. It, it's a great college town. Um, and then the administration here in organization, and you can kind of see it as football seasons, uh, you know, those games around how well organized the games are and they might be short staffed. And, and I've been to a lot of SEC football games. I've been around that stuff. And I, and I think the organization, the athletic organization is outstanding. And then, uh, and then, Throughout our program, same thing. There are so many things that are put in place here that, uh, you know, things that give you goosebumps or get excited about this place is that the foundation and the structure of Mississippi State is strong. 
like it's ready to go. And, uh, you know, we may or may not be there right now, but uh, when, you have a, when you have a solid foundation like that, that's exciting. There are some places and there are some jobs around the country that just don't have that foundation, don't have the organizational structure to ever uh, do well consistently. Uh, and from my small uh, time here, uh, this, this just seems set, set up for success. Andy, go ahead. Hey, Doug, I'm just trying to figure out the numbers of, of coaches you mentioned because you talked about Ashley Morris had COVID and wasn't able to go on the trip. So is that two additional coaches are on the staff that, that have it? And I don't need names. I'm just, is that yes, yes. Two, two additional. Yeah. And our, uh, our video, our video guy had it. And I can't remember if he was contact trace. Uh, they, it, it all becomes a blur after a while. I just, I just, this sounds heartless, but I, I just need to know when you can come back and uh, good luck. Um, and, and luckily there hasn't been anybody that's actually been ill from this. It's, it's they've just been taken out of their job. So do you guys test, I mean, I know every program does it differently. So is it, do you only test symptomatic people or is it the entire team gets tested or how does that kind of go? Right now, and I think, I think most of the SEC is doing this from what I've heard, both on the men's and, and the women's side. Uh, they were only testing if somebody had symptoms or runny nose. Um, and then there may have been a few cases or a few schools that just said, you know what, we just need to do one quick test. But there's nothing like we were doing last year in terms of two or three times, three, <coughs> excuse me, uh, two or three times a week. Uh, to see if you're okay. It's not like that. So if anybody has a little bit of a cough or something, they may just, you know what, I better check this out just to make sure. And, uh, and I, you know, it's a hard one too, because all of a sudden I just coughed right there. And, but, and then you have, you makes everybody in the room nervous. It makes myself nervous. Am I sick? And you can talk yourself into it. And, you know, again, we need to be responsible adults and, and all of that. But um, yeah, there's, Nothing has really changed in terms of testing as, as far as I know. And then one more for me before I'm done. I'm curious, so you talked about the recruiting aspect for a little bit. When, when a player wonders who's going to be the head coach next season, how do you try to answer that? Are you selling the program itself or, or do you try to sell the leadership that's, that may or may not be here? Uh, selling, selling the program, uh, selling the institution, and then – and then also just being honest, like this is college athletics. I said, no matter what job I've had over 30 years, I've always had one-year contracts. You know, even if it was, a, even if it said it was more, is like, this is a year-to-year -year job and people can, can get rid of you at any time, regardless of a contract. So I've always approached every job I've had as a one-year deal. And, uh, and so we're, we're up front with it and, um, you know, we're proud of what we're doing and uh, we're proud of where we're doing it. And, and again, the institution itself, not everybody has what I have. Uh, you know, you could be, well, I'm not even going to go there, but this is a good place. We'll wrap things up with John. Doug, uh, the last thing I, I guess I would have is um, based on watching the film again from that South Carolina game, and you can obviously include the circumstances of that game as well, but what did you learn the most about your team from that game and everything around it? Well, just that they stepped up to a challenge. And anytime somebody does that, because you, you always have the other option not to, and you have the other option to uh, to blame wine and complain and, and like I said before we did all those things but we let them go and then we chose the other way and it was nice that we all chose it uh, from staff you know putting together that scouting report really quick uh, from players listening and executing to the best of our abilities in a short amount of time like we responded and accepted the challenge regardless of how it went uh, we fought and so you know extremely proud of that and it's something it's something that you want to build on it's you know you don't need 27 of those in your life you just need a couple in your life where you did step up uh, and answered a challenge and did something that was a little bit tougher than maybe what the next person had to do and you can go back to those things for confidence and like we can do this um, and again that's that that would be my hope is that 
you know, this is what we, this is what we can do. Um, and we can grow from, from the, from these, uh, situations, nobody back down, nobody, uh, when it came time to compete, they competed. And, and that's a, that's a special thing. And especially in today's society. Thanks. Thanks everybody.